Hi, and welcome to Window Cleaning Dude. In today's episode, we're going to talk about your primary service, which is window cleaning. Now this should be obvious, right? This is a channel about window cleaning and it's all about window cleaning. Your primary service that you're going to offer your customers is window cleaning. Now you can offer other services and we're going to talk a little bit about that, but it's important that you always remember that your money maker, your bread and butter is window cleaning. So when you're out and you're cleaning windows, you need to always remember that the main thing that matters the most is the window cleaning. That's where you're going to make the most of your money. And if you find yourself doing other services that are making more money, then maybe it's time to switch from being a window cleaner to being something else. So always make sure that when you're adding on other services to your window cleaning business, that you never lose focus of your main money maker. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself kind of doing a little bit of everything, and then you're going to be more like a handyman as opposed to a window cleaner. So it's okay to add on other little services to your business, just as long as it's not detracting from your main service. Because oftentimes what happens is if you add way too many little add-on services, then you're so busy doing like all these other little add-on things that they're not making you the same amount of money as if you had just focused on one main service that you're proficient at and that you're really good at doing. Um, and so what happens is you get hired for window cleaning, but then they also have you like clean out the gutters and maybe doing a little bit of pressure washing. And then they might want you to, you know, do some of the blinds. And next thing you know, you're like doing all these different things and yeah, they're all bringing in money, but you're not cleaning like one house after another or one business after another. And because of that, you're not maximizing how much you could actually make in a day because you're being bogged down by doing all these other little services that you think are going to bring in extra money. And they are, but they're not being done as quickly as you would if you were to just do just window cleaning. It's fine to add on extra little services, just don't let it bog you down and keep you from making the most amount of money as fast as possible. So with window cleaning, it's very tempting to just only do outside only because you don't have to deal with the, anything on the inside, about well, maybe messing anything up, breaking anything, getting it dirty, moving things, uh, just being in the customer's personal space can sometimes be or feel awkward, um, but you really want to do more than just the outside. You really want to do inside and out. That's where you're going to make the most money. And so always try to be able to do the inside and the outside. And if a customer is like, well, hey, you know, I, I'm only going to be at my residence for a certain amount of time. So I'm just going to have you do the outside. You can always offer and say, well, I can clean the inside first and then the outside if you need me to. But always try to do the outside first, of course, because you're going to clean the windows better if you do the outside first. But if it means the difference between making that extra money by doing both inside and out or not, then <clears throat> by all means, clean the inside first. Always in your best interest to clean inside and out because you'll make the most money that way. Cleaning the outside is always the hardest portion of the job. So if you're not doing the inside, you're, you're missing out on the easiest part of the job and you're also missing out on that extra money always charge 70% of the cost if they only want outside done. Charge 70% of the cost of what it would have cost them to clean both the inside and the outside. That way you're kind of making up for that, the fact that you're missing out on the easy part of the job and only doing the hard part. That's my rule. I always stick to that rule. And if a customer doesn't want to follow that rule, then I don't, I don't clean their windows. The other bread and butter part of window cleaning is always to make sure you're getting all the windows you can get out of a job. So if you quoted them and you find out that they have garage windows that they didn't tell you about or skylights that they haven't thought about, always ask them before you start your job if you've noticed they have skylights or, or um, garage windows and see if they want those windows clean um, because those can be extra windows that you can easily do and make more money. And the more windows you can clean at a house, the better. The other thing that people probably want to know about just starting off in the window cleaning business is how often should I clean my customer's home? I mean, my customers are asking me, how often should I get my windows clean? It's really kind of up to the customer. I mean, if the customer doesn't know, then you might offer and say, well, you could have it done every quarter or every six months or once a year. And I usually recommend um, every six months to a year and most customers will actually have me do it once a year. Now, some customers will have me do it twice a year and occasionally you will get a customer who likes to have it done quite regular, regularly. 
And that can become a little more challenging if you're not used to servicing a customer on a regular basis because typically when you want to, when a customer wants you to do it on a regular basis, they want you to kind of just take over in terms of the scheduling and all that sort of thing. I personally, when I operate, I like to have the customer just call me and then I just fill them in. Um, but if you're good at scheduling and you don't mind doing a lot of scheduling and calling back and setting things up in advance and getting back to them all the time, um, reminding them that you're going to come out, then go ahead and set up people more frequently. And if you're doing commercial, especially storefront, then that's going to be the case. You're going to actually have a monthly schedule. But at the same time, um, with storefront, a customer should already know that you're coming twice a month. And so that's nothing new for them. Um, you're just coming on your, your schedule and then you're billing them at the end of the month. That's more common with storefront and they're more used to that. And then same with commercial. With them, I would just have them call you and just say, you know, every six months or every three months or once a year. Because um, they're more like commercial and residential are more kind of like the same time frame. You're not going to go and clean commercial like every month, especially with commercial because it's a lot more expensive. But with storefront, because it's only like $15, $20 a pop, they're going to have you come out twice uh, a month typically. So they can just have those constantly clean windows to look good for their, their customers walking in the door. Now, the next question you might be asking about your window cleaning service is whether or not you should put them under contract. Now, if you're doing storefront or commercial, absolutely do a contract if you can. Um, with commercial, you don't necessarily have to, but it's definitely recommended, but um, you're just gonna have to kind of feel that one out. But definitely with storefront, you definitely want a contract. Most people feel comfortable with the contract with commercial. Now, when it comes to residential, um, I do know window cleaners like to place uh, residential uh, customers under a contract, but I never did and I never had a problem with that. I just figured, well, if I'm the best, if I'm cleaning the best, if I'm doing my best and they like my work, they're going to call me back and they're going to have me clean again and again. And that happened. You know, I always did my best. I always made sure I did a good job on the windows. I always double checked to make sure the windows were clean. I did my very best and because of it, my business grew leaps and bounds and I always had referrals, repeat customers. And so I didn't really feel the need to place them under contract. I know as a homeowner myself, I'm not interested in being placed under a contract. And I think that most customers feel the same. When you're dealing with businesses like storefronts and commercial, they're kind of used to dealing with contracts. That's, that's their world is dealing with contracts. But for a homeowner, most homeowners do not want to be placed under any kind of contract. And so I just kind of thought about it like, how do I want to be treated if I was the homeowner? And I don't like contracts. So I don't place any residential customers under a contract. Um, I just assume, well, if I do a good job, they'll have me back. And that's what's happened. And like I said, I've been window cleaning for 10 years, actually a little over 10 years. So I have not had that problem ever be a problem. Another thing to think about is whether or not you're going to take an individual's credit card um, when you are scheduling an appointment. Some people like to have a credit card on file for a customer so that in case they decide not to get their windows clean within like a 24 hour period, you don't have a blank spot in your schedule where you didn't make any money. And so they will charge a cancellation fee. I never did that. I felt like it wasn't necessary. Very few people ever canceled on me. And I also felt like it just kind of started the relationship that you're trying to form with the customer on the wrong foot. They want to feel like you care about them and their windows and not about their credit card. So I never did that um, in residential or commercial or storefront. Just decided that that was going to be my business practice. You can do what you want to do, but if you want to follow my my success and my methods, I would recommend you not taking their credit card and not having a cancellation fee. So some of the services that you might add on to your window cleaning business is obviously um, you want to clean the tracks and sills. In my service, I offer free tracks and sills as part of the service, and then I have a um, a detailed uh, track cleaning that I charge additional for. So I will mention that to the customer. You might also consider doing blinds. I don't do blinds because I find them to be time consuming. And I try to focus on my bread and butter, which is window cleaning. But blinds is another option. You could do pressure washing. You can hang Christmas lights. You can do gutter cleaning. And then of course, um, one, two of the things that I did offer was cleaning solar panels. Once I got my water fed pole system, that was a very good use of my water fed pole system because all the panels are right next to each other and I could clean those very quickly. 
So I did offer that as a service and then I also did glass fence cleaning where I live. Uh, people have glass fences to look out over the views, over the ocean. So um, people would have glass balconies. So I would also offer that because you know, you're already cleaning windows, cleaning the glass fences, kind of like cleaning windows. And then of course you could also clean their mirrors. That's always a good add on. I always do that one. Some people will do chandeliers. I don't do chandeliers. I think they're time intensive and it's a lot of dusting and just not something that I'm interested in. So I never do chandeliers. Um, sometimes people will ask me to clean their outside lights. Um, and I will occasionally do that, but I don't offer that typically on my website. And so unless the customer specifically asks me that while I'm there cleaning their windows, um, otherwise I do not do it. And I might not even do it if they ask me while I'm there. It just depends on what my schedule is like, how many lights they have and what they're willing to pay me. So those are some very um, simple add-ons and some basic ones that you should consider. You gotta find what's gonna be the right price for you. You can go to my website, windowcleaningdude.com and see what I charge and the things that I talk about, especially with like glass fences and solar panels and figuring out your pricing. So you're just gonna have to figure out what's worth your time and make it worth your while to do these add-on services. For the other services like pressure washing or Christmas lights, if you live in a area where the winters are really bad, then I do know that Christmas lights are something that a lot of window cleaners will do to supplement their window cleaning income during the winter months if it's going slow in the winter months. It just depends on what kind of window cleaning you're doing, whether you're doing commercial or storefront or residential. Uh, you, might, you may need to add uh, Christmas lights to your lineup of services. And I do know that window cleaners can make 30 grand easily in the winter hanging Christmas lights. If that sounds something that you're interested in, you can go to windowcleaningdude.com or you can watch my video here on Christmas lights. And on windowcleaningdude.com, I go over all this information. It's all free um, and you can learn more about these services and other services that you can add to your business, what to charge, how to do them. On windowcleaningdude.com, you're going to learn everything about business and everything about starting a window cleaning business, start to finish, um, how to use all the tools, tutorials, how-to videos, step-by-step -step processes, everything's there for you, for your business. It's basically a franchise for free and um, go check it out. So if you enjoyed this video and you like the content that I provided today, please give me a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to my channel, be a part of the window cleaning community here on YouTube with my channel and also to let YouTube know that you enjoy these videos. So please subscribe and then also uh, check out windowcleaningdude.com, uh, leave a comment down below on anything that you want to talk about in terms of window cleaning or if there's something that you can't find that I haven't covered already in my videos or my website, please comment down below about that. And uh, click that notification bell if you want to find out uh, when new videos are coming out. All right, I will see you in the next episode.